All right, I want to teach you a couple of things to do with a graphing calculator. Okay, we have y equals x to the third minus 4x. When you graph it, it looks like this. Now, things for calculus that you need to know. Several things, uh, for instance, let's say you want to change the interval of the way the graph looks. So let's say the interval is from, um, change the domain. Let's say it's from 0 to 5. Okay, 0. Delete that, 0 to 5. You change your x window from 0 to 5. And then what you do is, when you do that, what happens is your graph looks kind of like this, and you're missing a whole bunch from here to here. So what you do, once you have your domain set, if you go to zoom and you push up, it's at the bottom, it says zoom fit. If you click on that, watch what happens. It'll now zoom it so that from 0 to 5, but the graph fits perfectly for your range, or the y values. So that's pretty important to make sure your graph fits in your screen nicely. Um, so you first what you do is you type in the interval and then you do under zoom, you go zoom fit. That's a pretty important feature. Anywho, um, we're gonna go back, whenever I zoom I tend to go back to the standards, the standard six. So we're gonna stay with standard six right now. Now, other things that are very, very useful, it's all about this button right here. If I hit second trace, I can find values. For instance, if I hit that and then say I put in one, what that's saying is, see where it's blinking right there? Right there, that's x is one. The value of that is negative three. That's the function. So for this function, at one, the value is negative three. So we go back over here. That say I want my zeros, which is pretty important if you're setting this equation equal to zero. Any equation, if you can get it to be equal to zero, you can solve it. So what you do is you kind of go, okay, to find zeros. You want to find out where it crosses the x-axis. So this is left bound. So I hit boom and I go across, right down, I'm on the right side or on the other side, from left to right, and then I hit guess, and now see it's flashing right there on the x-axis, which is the zero, it's telling me the zero is two. So that crosses at two. So you can find any of these spots where it crosses the x-axis, which are your zeros, by doing left and right bound by crossing over the x-axis where you, the, the value is. And that's how I solve my equation. Next, if I want to find my minimum, well, minimum, you can tell this right here is a minimum, and this is a maximum value, um, hills and valleys. So you got to go left bound, so you got to let's do a minimum here. I think I did minimum. So I go boom, then I walk across the minimum to my other side, my right side, and then I guess, and then bam, it gives me the coordinate for my minimum. That coordinate is the minimum value. Okay, if I do second trace, I got maximum, I could do that too. If I put another equation, I can find out where the two graphs cross. Derivatives, if I hit this button, let's say I want to know the derivative of the slope when it is 2. So when I hit x equals 2, that means where it's dot, right there at the x-axis, which we talked about earlier, the slope is 8. dy dx is the slope. So the slope of this graph is 8 there. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, last one is, oh, integral, very important. If I want to integrate, well, if I want to find the area of the curve over a certain interval, first of all, you just kind of walk across. Now, if it's walking across, I'm like, oh, I, I want an exact value. Uh, it's not right here. Um, what you do is, let's say, okay, you just type it in. From negative 1, your lower limit. Just type it in. It's pretty cool. My upper limit, uh, let's say I want my upper limit. You could walk along, or you could just type it in, say, to 3. So from negative 1 to 3, the area between, uh, it takes the area under the curve. Um, between the curve and the x-axis, basically, and it's saying the area adds up to 4. It's really cool. It's all within this button. Again, make sure you can adjust the window, zoom fit, make sure you understand all those buttons. Another interesting thing is, under math, you have all these func a lot of these functions as well, under math. One of the interesting ones is inderiv. I can actually graph the derivative of this function. So what I do is I write inderiv, then I hit vars, and go over 1, function, y1, which means function 1, which is y1, comma x, because we're deriving, this is deriving in respect to x, and then we're not plugging a number in this time, but we're plugging x in. And if you do that, watch what happens. You are going to get the graph of the derivative. Now, that kind of is messed up because this graph underneath is all kind of freaky, but that right there is the derivative of my original graph. graph. Now, what's one bad thing about when you do this area under the curve thing is it does shade. How, here's how you take off the shade. You gotta go here, equals, and you can go, once you do that, if I hit graph again, it's only gonna graph the derivative because the original function, I took off the equal sign. So there's the derivative. Now if I want that one back, you go boom, 
go back to y equals, go back to the equal sign, hit enter, so they're both black. Now it's going to graph both. It's a nice little feature. So there's my original, and it's going to graph my derivative. Whenever you graph a derivative, it's always a little slower because it's taking a function and plugging it into its another function, so it's taking a little bit longer to compute. Hopefully all this helps. Now say I want to find out where they intersect. You can use this function to use intersect and find out where these two graphs actually intersect if you wanted to do that as well. Lots of possibilities. A very smart calculator. Hopefully you can use it well.